What's up YouTube? In this lesson, we'll learn how to switch out content while we're scrolling through a sticky section in Webflow. We'll also be able to anchor to different parts of that section and display our progress while we're scrolling through it. So I have the code for all of this in the page settings before body tag section. We won't be touching any of the code for this though. We'll customize all of it with attributes. I'll be using collection list for this, but you can also do this with static content by replacing the wrapper list and items with divs instead. First, we'll need a div that holds our entire scroll section, and we can give it any class name we'd like. It needs a position of relative, and it needs a specific attribute. The attribute name will be tr-scroll-toggle, and the value will be component. So inside of that, we can add another div, and this is going to be our trigger. We can give it any class name. The code will duplicate the trigger div for each collection item inside our component, but we only need to have one trigger div in the component by default. We can give it any height we'd like, and we can even adjust the height on each breakpoint. This means each item will have an ADVH scroll distance. I'll go ahead and give this a border so we can see it while testing, but this is something we'd want to remove once we're finished building. The trigger div needs a specific attribute of tr-scroll-toggle and a value of trigger. Inside the component, we can add in our entire section and move it above the trigger div. It can have any class name we'd like, and it doesn't need an attribute. It does need a width of 100%, a height of 100VH, and position sticky 0 pixels to the top of its parent, which means none of its parents can have overflow hidden set. The sticky element will also need a Z index of 2, so that way it rests on top of the triggers. In this case, I'll apply grid to my section to stack the two columns side by side, and I'll have a 0 pixel gap. Inside our two columns, we have three collection lists all pulling from the same collection. We can apply this effect to as many collection lists inside our component as we'd like. We need to select the list element that's inside of our wrapper and give it a custom attribute of tr-scroll-toggle and a value of list. We need to apply the same attribute to every list that we'd like the effect to be applied on. So tr-scroll-toggle, value of list, and we'll do the exact same thing for this third one and give it a value of list. This means while we're scrolling past our component, we'll be cycling through the items in each of these three lists. So the items are gonna get a combo class of is active whenever they're active. So we'll turn these down to 30% opacity by default and we'll add a transition to opacity. Then whenever we add the is active combo class, we'll turn them up to 100% opacity. So when we add and remove that class, notice how they fade to those values because of our transition. We have these images here inside of this list and they're all absolutely positioned sort of on top of each other. We'll turn the opacity of all our images down by default. They have the same transition. And whenever we add the is active combo class onto them, we'll change that one up to full opacity whenever it's active. Now in this list, we have a group of all of our text and we could set them all to sort of display none and then whichever one has the combo of is active, we could change only that one to display block. The issue we'll have here is whenever we change elements from none to block, we can't transition its properties. So what we'll do instead is leave it set to display block, even in the active state, but we're going to position it absolute to the bottom of sort of its list, which means its list needs position relative. So all these items are stacked on top of each other. They'll also have a negative one Z index, so we can't click on any of them, and an opacity of zero, so we're not seeing them. Then whenever it gets the combo class of is active, we'll turn the opacity of that one up, we'll give it a higher enough Z index, and we'll switch only that one to position relatives, so it takes up space. And with all those changes saved, let's test it out. So here we are focused on trigger div one, and the first collection item in each of our three lists is focused. Whenever the top of the second trigger div hits the top of the screen, the second item in each of our lists become focused. Whenever the top of the third panel reaches top of screen, the third item in our three list becomes focused. Including some while scrolling interactions is key to making these sticky sections work. The user should feel the progress as they scroll through the component. So we can add animations to any children inside of our collection items by using attributes. So I'll give it an attribute name of tr-item-animation, and there's a couple animation types we can choose from, and even feel free to include your own in here. We're gonna use the progress horizontal, which animates the element to a width of 100%. So we'll plug that in for the value. That means the width on this element needs to start at 0%. Since this is an item animation, we'll notice that the width of this line animates to 100% while we're scrolling past this item's trigger. 
And when we start scrolling past the trigger for the second item or the third, the width of those lines animate. For all of those animation types, we also have a version called TR Section Animation, which tracks the progress of the entire section. So here we can use Progress Vertical to create a vertical scroll bar. And we have the scroll bar right here. We're gonna set its initial height to 0%, and then we'll create sort of a TR Section Animation on it called Progress Vertical and save. Now that element right here will animate while we're scrolling past the entire section. Switching back to our item animations, we have a scale to one, which means its ending value will be one. And we have a scale from one, which means the starting value will be one. So we'll head over to Webflow. On our image element here, we're gonna apply a TR item animation, and it's gonna be a scale to one, which means we set our own starting value in Webflow. So we can come over here and we'll set the starting transform to a scale of 1.2 and it'll scale down to one. Next, we'll select the icon and we'll apply a TR item animation to that. And its value is gonna be a scale from one, meaning the starting value will be one and we want it to scale up to whatever value we set in Webflow. Once we publish that, notice how the image is scaling down and the icon is scaling up when we're scrolling past its related panel. There's a couple extra helpful attributes we can add. First, if we want to show numbers while we're scrolling past our items, we can give the span a name of TR scroll toggle and a value of number dash current. It'll display the current items number. We can give the second span a TR scroll toggle name and a value of number dash total, and it'll display the total number of items. If we want to scroll into the correct trigger div whenever we click on one of these items, we can select their list and give it an extra attribute of tr-anchors. And whenever we click on those items, it'll scroll us to the correct place. Finally, if we want the user to be snapped into the correct position whenever they release off their scroll bar, we can grab our entire component here and give it an optional attribute of tr-scroll-snap and a value of true. With those settings saved, notice how our number here in the top right updates when we scroll past our items. Also, we can click one of these to scroll to the correct trigger div. And if we scroll just sort of a little bit and release, notice how it snaps us to the correct position. Right now, this same functionality is being applied across all our breakpoints, and we could just adjust our section layout on different screen sizes. But sometimes we may want to disable the interaction altogether on mobile. To do that, we'll select our component and add in another attribute of tr-min-width and apply a min width that we want our interaction to work for. In this case, I'll do 992, which is the smallest version of desktop. Anything below that, the interaction won't run. So then it's just up to us to adjust the elements. So we'll select our trigger divs and we'll set those to display none. We'll select our sort of sticky section and we'll give that a height of auto instead of 100 VH and a position of relative. We'll select its grid and we'll remove one of the columns. We'll select sort of this visual column with the photo inside it and set that to display none. And then we have this content column. We'll select the tab wrapper and set that to display none. And finally, we have the actual content collection. So we'll go ahead and select this item. They were all absolute on top of each other. We'll switch those back to position relative and they were zero opacity. We'll switch them to full opacity. We'll also give them sort of no max width. So they span hundred percent. And then we have these hidden elements inside of the item, like the icon, we can switch to block. We have this hidden photo we can switch to block. And that way these elements only show up on tablet on down. So we have sort of this static list that we can scroll past for our mobile experience. And then on desktop, everything is more dynamic. So on desktop, we're seeing three collection lists here and we can scroll past them all. And then on mobile, we're only seeing the one collection list and all the active classes in the component get removed. Finally, let's set up the attributes for our last component. So we have this component here. We're gonna give an attribute name of TR scroll toggle and a value of component. Then we have the trigger inside of that. So we'll give it an attribute of TR scroll toggle, value of trigger. We'll make these triggers a height of 100 VH. So we're scrolling past the items for a little bit longer. We have the sticky div inside. We don't need to do anything with that. And then we have a collection list absolute to the whole item with all of our background images. So we'll select the list element and let's give it an attribute name of TR scroll toggle and a value of list. We also have these number spans inside, so we can give them TR scroll toggle and a value of number, let's say dash current. 
and then we have the total one here. So we'll select that span, TR scroll toggle value of number dash total and save. Instead of hiding the items until they get the active class, we'll leave them all visible and we'll be affecting the scale of the elements inside of them. So we wanna animate these elements while we're scrolling past their item. So we'll give it an attribute of TR item animation and this will be a scale to one animation. And we wanna start this overflow div at a value of overflow hidden. And we wanna start it at a scale of zero. So it's completely hidden in the middle here. At the same time, we'll be animating the image inside it to create sort of a parallax effect. So we'll give it a TR item animation and a scale to one uh, sort of attribute name as well. And then we're gonna start the scale on this image at a scale of two. So it'll start large and scale down to one. At the same time, its parent will be really small, scale of zero, and it'll scale up to one. If we test that out while we're scrolling past this first item, notice our overflow div is scaling up, the image inside is scaling down, and it creates the smooth parallax effect. Then we start scrolling past the second and third items. We also have this progress bar div here. We wanna animate the width of to 100%. And this is going to happen while we're scrolling past the entire section. So we'll do a TR section animation of progress horizontal, and that'll animate it from the 0% width to 100% width. And that bar is tracking our progress throughout the entire section. We'll do something a little differently for this list instead of toggling an active class on each of the items. We'll set the height of the list to be the same height as one of our items. Then we'll select the parent and set it to overflow hidden so it crops it off. If we select the list, we can transform it by negative 100% to see the second item and by negative 200% to see the third item. So we can keep increasing this by negative 100% each time. This only works if each of the items share the same height. If we want it to animate to this value, we can apply a transition and I'll apply that to transform and do a 600 milliseconds. So if we do negative 100%, notice how it animates smoothly to that value. So we wanna slide this list up in increments of negative 100% each time we scroll into a new item. And to do that, we can use our same TR scroll toggle attribute, but with values of transform Y or transform X, depending on which direction we want to slide it. So we'll grab our list here and we'll give it that attribute of TR scroll toggle and the value of transform dash Y. So whenever we scroll into view of a new item, the text slides up by an additional negative 100%, and it also reverses whenever we go back. And we're gonna be able to keep this exact same interaction for this component on mobile, and that's looking great. So that wraps up how to create these scroll toggle interactions in Webflow.